Ladies and gentlemen, we are live here with Thin Red Line. Ladies and gentlemen, we have got a fantastic show for you this evening. Every title is on the line except the Internet Championship. We just didn't have room for it. But here in Gainesville, Georgia, we are doing it big. We have the Uprising World Heavyweight Championship between Siler Jordan and Bruiser Brad. That is on the line. We've got Tag Team Championships galore. We've got the Hounds of Havoc, Mahati Khan and Mateo taking on Luke Luger and Lewis Luger, the original outlaws for those Rebellion Tag Team Championships. Following that matchup, we have got the Maidens Championship on Rebellion, Veronica Haas and Jessica Hernandez been going at each other as of late. Jess has kind of been coming out on top, so we will see what's in store here for our one and only Maidens Champion. Will she be hang able to hang on to that title? We will see, that's for sure. And then a triple threat television championship matchup. Malcolm Black defeated Crane on an episode of Upri or, yes, excuse me, on an episode of Uprising to become the number one contender. But on that same episode, Morpheus defeated the television champion and Seb Abbott. We'll have to see who can come out on top if Seb is going to continue to be your television champion or if we have a new one in Morpheus or Malcolm Black. Following that, the Uprising Tag Team Championship is on the line. The Tag Team, Brian the Brain and Enns, are taking on Sons of Carnage, James Gaines III and Jesse Newman. Looking forward to to these tag team matchups, that's for sure. Following that, in our co-main event, it is the Uprising's Phoenix Championship. We have what turned into a triple threat match between every member of the Blonde Beauty Club, Angelina Lane, Ashley, and her sister, Brittany, are in this matchup. And ladies and gentlemen, it is a TLC matchup. Really excited to crown the first ever Phoenix Champion. The belt creator did a Fantastic job for that title, and we are excited to see who's going to win it. And then in our main event, this one has been going back and forth. Leo McKay is taking on Calypso, our elite champion for Rebellion. Leo McKay kind of playing coy a little bit with Calypso, not uh, getting into the ring with him. Instead, trying to send people in to do his dirty work and attacking Calypso a few times from behind and just causing Calypso all kinds of grief. And boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, this matchup will be a no holds barred main event for the SWF Elite Heavyweight Championship. I am so excited, I hope you guys are too. Let's get into our card this evening. We're gonna start things off with that SWF Uprising Heavyweight Championship Tournament Finale between Siler Jordan and Bruiser Brad. Well folks, in the ring, our lovely ring announcer, she is letting the folks know here in the arena that this matchup will be a title matchup and it is for the Uprising Heavyweight Championship as the lights go down. Introducing first here at Thin Red Line. The arena looks fantastic. Did a great job getting everything in order, and here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The one and only. This is Siler Jordan, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Siler Jordan, you must be living under a rock because myself, CM Puma, and Siler Jordan have not been seeing eye to eye as of late. But it doesn't matter how I totally feel you can't deny this man is one of the greatest at the moment going uh, completely undefeated on rebellion winning the internet championship at I want to say it was capital combat maybe um, he held on to that chain yes I believe it was check capital combat he held uh, on that championship for quite some time before relinquishing it in a oh I'm sorry not capital combat it was previous to capital combat it was crowning achievement my apologies crowning achievement Siler Jordan won that championship in a fatal four-way 
between Ryu Takeshi, Duke Zenda, and Will Steele. Not only did he win that matchup, he eliminated everybody that was in that matchup. He then held on to that championship until Capital Combat when he took on the Elimination Chamber and was the first one eliminated. And of course, Luke Luger won that championship before Siler Jordan was traded to Uprising and competed in the tournament where he defeated Youngblood and Havoc and now faces this man, the enforcer of the Fallen Kingdom. Look, just look how monstrous this man is. He is humongous. This, of course, is Bruiser Brad. He is the shield of the Fallen Kingdom. Bruiser Brad also on Rebellion for quite some time before being drafted to Uprising, but his, uh, I want to say his nemesis, also drafted to Uprising, and that was Jay Wolf. Well, in the first round, Bruiser Brad defeated Duke Zenda in this Uprising Heavyweight Championship Tournament, and Jay Wolf defeated Tyler Adams. Jay Wolf and Bruiser Brad had to face off against each other in the second round. Now, in some uncharacteristically attitude towards this matchup from Jay Wolf, Bruiser Brad ended up getting the victory and gaining his spot here at Thin Red Line against Siler Jordan for this, at the moment, vacated title. Siler Jordan and Bruiser Brad teamed up on the last episode of Uprising to take on Jay Wolf and Havoc. After the matchup and after they got the win, Bruiser Brad attacked Siler Jordan, thus setting up the bad blood between these two gentlemen. And as you can see there, the Up Rising Championship, the referee holds it up. And ladies and gentlemen, this thing is just about underway. Siler Jordan and Bruiser Brad, already the ref, rings that bell, and they meet in the center of the ring. And good Lord, Siler Jordan starts things off with that famous sir. And he is going big time on Bruiser Brad and quickly goes for the pin. No, and a kick out. Wow, Siler Jordan doing a great job. I mean, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do to keep this man down. He's well over 500 pounds, close to seven feet tall. Bruiser Brad is a beast. Siler Jordan, of course, much, much smaller, but faster. And you can see him keeping Bruiser Brad down onto the ground right now. Massive knees to the head, get the big man disoriented, and he's gonna have a hard time. He's gonna have a hard time in this ring, and over the top goes Brad, and oh man, Brad with the kick to the side of the head. As he lumbers over the top rope, Siler Jordan, center of the ring. Oh, dodges that big headbutt, oh my goodness. What a move there from Jordan. It has been all Siler Jordan, and just as I say that, a big, big clothesline from Bruiser Brad puts Siler Jordan down to the mat. I am super excited about this matchup. Both men have uh, been doing quite well in SWF. What a remote maneuver. Oh my God. Turns Brad inside out. And just like Siler Jordan, that shady SOB has removed the turnbuckle and using Brad's weight and momentum against him, flings him over, the, over his upper body. And we're gonna see it again. Good Lord. Wow. And just like that, folks, we are about to see it from Siler Jordan. Dragon's Bane knee right to the face of Brad, and he doesn't hesitate to pick Brad up. I might have gone for the pin after that, but we all know me as CM Puma is a better wrestler than Siler Jordan. Nice reversal and cranking the arm of Brad. Look at Brad over the top into the turnbuckle and a headbutt. To Bruiser Brad. Bruiser Brad's head is twice the size of Siler Jordan's. What is he thinking? Big shot to the gut now. Is that exposed turnbuckle going to come into play here? Oh boy, I thought this was it. Face first into the turnbuckle goes Brad. And now, oh boy. What is Siler Jordan doing? Diving through the ropes. DDT to the outside. My goodness. What a move there from Siler Jordan. He quickly slides back into the ring to break up the count. Back out to restart it. 
the crowd chanting, this is awesome. I do have to agree. Siler Jordan has pretty much pretty much been handling Bruiser Brad and a frog splash from the outside. The big man might have met his matchup here in Siler Jordan. It's weird to say. Oh, look at this, the pin, and look at Siler Jordan, you cocky SOB. Oh, man, I thought that was it. And now, dropping him down, hooking him up. Look at this. Look at him locked up by the ropes. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. I can't believe what I'm seeing and what I'm about to say. Siler Jordan has defeated Bruiser Brad in, in quite the fashion. This matchup was entirely Siler Jordan. Bruiser Brad, my man, I am disappointed in your performance here tonight. Look at this. Look at this nonsense. Look at this nonsense. My, my. Ladies and gentlemen, Siler Jordan has defeated the shield of the fallen kingdom as he taps out right there. He can take no more. And our first ever uprising heavyweight champion is Siler Jordan. While we do not see eye to eye on just about everything, you cannot deny this man's ability and his skill. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you your champion for Uprising, Siler Jordan. Oh, it looks like Siler has gone to ringside and grabbed a microphone. Let's hear what the new champ has to say. I just want to take a moment to thank Bruiser Brad. You push me, man. There's not one guy in that locker room. There's not one guy that I was more excited and worried about facing tonight. Then there's not one guy who deserved to be in this ring to face me for this uprising world championship. <laughs> and it feels really damn good to hold this belt up and tell every one of you Every member of the Thrillerverse, everyone in this arena, everyone who's got my back and everyone who wants to stab me in it, that I am unquestionably the top champion in all of wrestling. I am the Uprising World Heavyweight Championship and this title, this title vindicates all the hard work. It vindicates all the long nights. It vindicates all of the ego that I've had. And you know, I've rubbed people the wrong way. And I don't care. I don't care that I've rubbed you the wrong way. Because I came out to do one thing. I came out here to be the absolute best. To give the absolute most. And to put on the absolute greatest matches in wrestling. And I've done that tonight, and I've earned this tonight. And so when I hold this title up, when I put this title over my shoulder, when you look at me, you know, you know that I am everything I've said I am. I am the point of professional wrestling, and I am thrilling. Well, folks, you have got to hand it to Siler Jordan. He came out and did exactly what he said he was going to do. But now he's come out, he said his piece, and now he is the world champion of Uprising. But as we move 
from our first title match of the night, we go into our second title match, and it is, of course, for the vacated Rebellion Tag Team Championship. The tournament that had gone on for a couple of matches, Hounds of Havoc, uh, as we see here in the ring, Mateo, their center ring, and Mahati Khan with the, the vest on. They had a interesting road, I should say, for themselves as they made their way to the uh, championship match here at Thin Red Line. They faced off against, I believe it was Aggression. As I go through my notes here. And Aggression ended up breaking up. They ended up breaking up and Hounds of Havoc got themselves a second chance. So after Aggression won, but then broke up, Hounds of Havoc got moved on to the second round to face Prodigal Romance and Ryan Riley and Lance Romance. And now they are here in the finals. As you can see, the original Outlaws making their way down to the ring. Our internet champion in Luke Luger and his giant brother, Louis Luger, Lewis and Luke were in the Elimination Chamber matchup at Capital Combat. Lewis tapping Siler Jordan out with that torture rack and thus paving the way for his brother to become the internet champion. Now after he tapped out Siler Jordan, anybody was gonna be the champion after that. But in the end, it was his brother, Luke Luger, this guy, submission machine. Don't be surprised if you see a submission here tonight. They faced off against the hit squad, James Lanza and William Parker, in the second round of the sem of the semifinal of the uh, Rebellion Tag Team Tournament. And they are here tonight. And they are ready to go. Here is the gold, ladies and gentlemen. Those Rebellion Tag Team Championship. It is on the line. The ref holding up. The first, th these guys are going to be the first ever tag team champions on Rebellion, as we'll see the first ever tag team champions for Uprising later th tonight. It looks like Mahati Khan and Lewis Luger are going to start things off, and Lewis starts things off big time with a big club right across the back of the neck. Luke out there on the outside, pumping his brother up in the crowd as his Lewis drops huge knees, good lord, across the chest of Mahati Khan and he is already taunting Khan and the Hounds of Havoc. Oh gosh, look at the size of those boots. They're driving into the chest of Mahati Khan. And oh, look at that, got out of it in a big clothesline. He had to throw everything he had into that clothesline. And it looked like he was possibly pulling him away for a pin, but instead goes over to Mateo Mateo comes in. Lewis slowly making it up to his feet, but Mateo has none of that. He shuts that down. He delivers a big kick to the back. Here's the, here's the strategy that I would try to employ here. Oh, big knee to the to the forearm, and oh, Mateo misses, but quickly jumps back up. Big gets caught in a clothesline, and Lewis takes him down. Oh man. The strategy, strategy I would try to employ if I was Hounds of Havoc and Mahati Khan and Mateo, keep one guy in the ring. If you keep one guy in the ring, no matter how big they are, you might just have a shot. Uh-oh. By the throat. And Lewis, oh, big gut punch right to the gut of Mateo. Sends him down to the mat. And here we go. That strategy may not quite work. Oh my goodness, it just might. Delivers a headbutt to Lewis. And wow, Mateo gets tossed down very quickly. Sent back into the corner now. And here comes Luke Luger, our internet champion. Our only champion that, oh man, that doesn't have a matchup here tonight as he quickly goes for the pin. Mahati Khan comes in and breaks that thing up. Lewis though. Look at this, German almost tosses Khan outside the ring. Mateo getting stomped on there by Luke. Luke has the opportunity here tonight to become the first ever double champion in SWF. 
Oh, jeez. What a boot to the face that was. And just as I said, submission locked in. There are no rope breaks here in SWF. And no, it looks like Mateo's going to get out of it. Oh, and drops Luger right on the back of his head. <coughs> Quickly back up now. Sends him up. And oh, my goodness, face first down into the mat and shooting the double birds to Luke. Oh boy, here we go. Shot after shot, ducks down the clothesline from Luger and a big flying clothesline from Mateo there. And oh boy, what are we seeing here? Mateo, he's hooking Luke up in the tree of woe. Oh, nice reversal though. And that could be the, end. oh, I spoke too soon. Mateo's got Luger up, but he kicks out of it. Oof, drops Mateo down on the back of his head. Going over to tag, as you can see Khan out there getting upset. Big knee to the side of the head, and folks, Mateo is busted open. Look at this. Oh, man. Face first into that bloody forehead of Mateo. He needs to get out and get into his own corner. But folks, this might be the end. Oh my goodness for the Hounds of Havoc. Mohadi Khan comes in but gets tossed away and Mateo kicks out. My goodness, Mateo kicks out. And quickly, Lewis goes for the pin again. No. Holy cow. The Hounds of Havoc not ready to give up just yet. That shows some true heart there out of these guys. Mateo, oh, rolls out of the way. Doesn't go for the tag immediately, and he gets caught by Luger. Tosses down to the mat. Look at this. Ugh. That huge clubbing forearm right across the chest of Mateo. Mateo's got to get out of this thing. Uh-oh. This is the move that sent Siler Jordan out of that Elimination Chamber match and cost him the Internet Championship, but it looks like Mateo is going to be able to fight his way out of it. He really has got to get over there and tag his partner in. But the Luger brothers taking it to him, and this is how it... Oh, geez, into that suplex again. One, two. They have just beat the Hounds of Havoc. My goodness. What a battle. Hounds of Havoc uh, didn't really have a chance. It didn't seem that they really had a chance. Who is going to step up and take on the original Outlaws for the Tag Team Championships? I don't know. Just like I don't know who's going to be able to step up and take on Luke for that Internet Championship. Look at this. Just Oh, man. Throwing Mateo up in the air. And right here we see a better angle of Mahadi Khan getting tossed out of the ring. But Mateo was able to kick out, but not this time. Oh, I apologize. I apologize. Different angle from the same pin. And that is almost how it's done. I mean, I was pretty sure that he was going to tap out. Wasn't able to get over to his tag team partner. And ladies and gentlemen... The original Outlaws are your new tag team champions. The ref comes in with those belts. They are your tag team champions for Rebellion. Fantastic looking belts for these two gentlemen. Look at it in Lewis's hand. It's so small. It's like a toy belt. Original Outlaws, Luke and Lewis Luger are your Rebellion Tag Team Champions. Congratulations, fellas. Well, folks, I can't say that I'm surprised that the original Outlaws won on e either show, Rebellion or Uprising. But we have got another Rebellion matchup as we is making her way down to the ring. Now, this matchup is for the SWF. Rebellion Maidens Championship. The current holder, Veronica Haas, has held that title since K 
ca- uh, excuse me, since crowning achievement two pay-per-views ago, our first pay-per-view in SWF. She went all the way through that tournament and won that title before facing off against, I want to say, Selena um, in the at, at Capital Combat. Unable to win that matchup. She comes out. Victor, Veronica Haas comes out on top. And now, and Jessica Hernandez, these two ladies have really, really been going at each other. And Jessica's been coming out on top. To see a new champion? It just might. But we know that Veronica Haas is uh, quite shifty. She is uh, able to play against their uh, her opponent's strengths and weaknesses. And there she is. She holds... That Maiden's Championship, that thing looks humongous on her. My goodness. But she is the Maiden's Champion. She has held that title for quite some time. I want to say well over 60 days or so. She makes her way down to the ring. Now this is a Veronica Haas. We are... We've only seen one other time, I believe, or twice. We know there's another version of Veronica Haas, a more scary version, if you will. But here she is with that Maidens Championship. She is ready to go. As you see Jessica down there, maybe trying to play some mind games. Look, oh my good lord. Je- excuse me, Veronica Haas is fired up tonight, folks. She is raring to go. And she is ready to defend that championship at all costs. Just the fire in her eyes here tonight. Can she hold on to this title and and defend it six for a second time? Of course, we're gonna have to wait and find out. But it's all about the maidens championship for SWF. That is a great looking title. And here we are, folks. Jessica Santana Hernandez is the challenger here tonight. And she has been putting on just show after show and showing why she should be the Maidens champion. Veronica Haas, on the other hand, doing the same. Jessica did get a win um, over Veronica Haas this month where Veronica ended up attacking the referee in frustration. Um, And then in their last matchup on Rebellion, it barely got started before they could break them apart. The ref holds up that Maiden's Championship, and it is time to go for these two ladies. Who is going to come out on top? Is it Jessica? Is it Veronica? We're about to find out. Center of the ring, Veronica starts things off by dragging Jessica right over to the top ropes and just jerking it back right across the throat area. Jessica pulled back up to her feet and, oh my goodness, almost tossed out of the ring by her hair. Veronica not going to give up that title easily, and I don't blame her. This is the first title defense on the card here tonight. Look at this. Oh, hooking her up. Oh, man, what a neck breaker. The second title defense, of course, is going to be the Elite Championship, our main event of this evening. Leo McKay versus Calypso in a no-holds-barred match. I'm interested to see how that goes. And Jessica with the reversal of, of Veronica and a nice standing moonsault there. Wow. The tide turned quickly in Jessica's favor. The Queen Latina, as it says on her boots, delivers that big knee right to the face of Veronica. And it looks like it's all Jessica right now, sending her out. Jess goes in. Oh, nice Hurricane Rana from the second row. Right? Using Veronica's momentum against her own cell. That's, not, that's a great idea. Fantastic job there from Jessica. She delivers another boot to the bridge of the nose. And a whippersnapper from Hernandez. 
arm drag reversal though from Veronica in the corner. And Veronica again, straight jacket, neck breaker. Good Lord, that is a very stiff neck breaker delivered to Jessica. Shot to the face. And oh my goodness, that death drop reverse DDT. And here we see Veronica hooking up the Rings of Saturn move. That submission trying to get Jessica to tap out. But Jessica's not having it. A big knee to the face causes Veronica to let go. Look at the kicks and just tossing Veronica down by her hair. Jessica calling her up to her feet now. Oh, and a top rope. Hurricane Rana, very nice move, or a second rope. Hurricane Rana, I should say. Very nice move. Veronica now hanging on the ropes. And Jessica sending her back. Nope. Jessica with the handstand. Oh my God, what a head scissors move that was. Jessica is in full control now, and she is ready to do this. Vertical suplex power bomb from Jessica. She doesn't go for the pin right away. I'm not sure why you wouldn't. And it looks like Veronica's gonna take advantage of that. Veronica's got her hooked up. No, nice reversal from Jessica into a neck breaker and boy, are we about to see it. Jessica's got Veronica up. No, okay, she paused on us and hits the attitude adjustment and clean the first pin of the match. Jessica Hernandez, ladies and gentlemen, wins the Maidens Championship away from Veronica Haas. My goodness, look at this vertical suplex power bomb. And not ready to give up, she pauses, talks a little trash in the ear of Veronica Haas, and drops her down with that attitude adjustment, and the ref counts one, two, three. It looked like this matchup was all Veronica Haas to begin, but in the end, Jessica Hernandez takes over. And ladies and gentlemen, Jessica Hernandez is your new Maidens champion for Rebellion. Could not be happier for her as she's worked her way to this point since she started here in SWF. In that original tournament, I don't, I not quite remember. I'd have to go back through my notes, but she uh, did not do so well in that tournament, I don't think. Good for her. Well, folks, before we get started with this matchup, I want to make a correction. As Jessica was celebrating, I checked back on my notes. And Jessica actually faced off against Veronica Haas in the finals at Crowning Achievement two pay-per-views ago. So... I want to correct that. Of course, Veronica Haas got the victory over Jessica. A couple months later, Jessica repays the favor. Moving on, as we see Morpheus making his way down to the ring, this matchup is for the Uprising Tele Championship. Now, the way Morpheus got into this matchup on the latest episode of Uprising, Morpheus defeated the television champion Seb Abbott thus inserting himself into this television championship matchup making it a triple threat match now Seb Abbott of course won that television championship after winning a six-man battle royal and then facing off against the winner and second runner-up of another six-man battle royal making it a fatal four-way that involved I believe it was Malcolm Black, Seb Abbott, James Gaines the third and ends which Seb Abbott got the victory there and Morpheus just dumping himself into the ring Seb Abbott has been our television champion for about three weeks 
he was crowned on the second or third episode of Uprising. And he is, um, I've seen him in the back. And ladies and gentlemen, this man is ready for war. That's for sure. But introducing next, as we see Morpheus in the ring getting ready. The other member of the Fallen Kingdom tag team, he is the sword of the Fallen Kingdom and Bruiser Brad's tag team partner, Malcolm Black. Now, of course, earlier in the night, Bruiser Brad lost his Uprising Heavyweight Championship match against Tyler Jordan. Will Malcolm Black be the first member of the Fallen Kingdom? to bring gold to the group. We will have to see Malcolm Black and Bruiser Brad, although a tag team, both have had their shots at individual gold in the singles runs that they've had. But we'll have to see what comes out of this matchup here tonight. As Malcolm stands in the ring, and Morpheus stands on the outside our television champion making his way from the back. This man is ready for war, going full on crossbones. He is not leaving anything to chance here tonight. After the beating he took from Morpheus after their matchup, Morpheus attacked Seb Abbott after he got the pin and thus we're seeing the chest guard and plates on Seb Abbott. He's not a dumb man. He knows what he's got to do to keep his television championship safe. And if that means wearing body armor to the ring, then by God, he's going to wear body armor to the ring. His ribs may be a little taped up, maybe a little bruised. His pectoral muscles might be a little damaged, but we won't know. We won't know because of his pay-per-view attire. But he wears the title around his waist. And that's what it's all about right there. The fans are ready to go. And are ready for this SWF Television Championship matchup. That's the gold right there. The referee holds it up for all to see. And this thing is underway. Look at this man. What a crazy person. He's a crazy Australian. Morpheus goes after the champ. And immediately, nope, I was going to say tosses him out of the ring, but delivers a drop toe hold. Then delivers a backbreaker and a side Russian leg sweep to Malcolm Black. Morpheus on a tear going up. And Moonsault, nice job there from Morpheus. Seb Abbott now with a side Russian leg sweep of his own. And he is he is locked in on Morpheus, and I don't blame him after what happened on Uprising. Morpheus attacked him after their match, couldn't just take the victory. Whoa, what a reversal there from Black. Couldn't take the victory and Morpheus attacking Seb Abbott afterwards. Seb having to roll out to catch his breath. It looks like in a hurricane run. Oh, into the pin right away. Almost a dragon Rana there from more, or excuse me, from Malcolm Black. Look at this. Spinning head scissors sends Morpheus down and oh! Seb Abbott comes in and immediately takes Black down and delivers some big punches right to the face of Black. Man, Black sends Abbott down to the mat and a nice Meteora there sending, uh, oh, almost, almost said somebody else's name. Mm -hmm. He must not be named. Almost sending Morpheus to the outside, but he regains his composure there on the ring apron. Uh-oh. These guys are, oh, Abbott knocks down Malcolm Black on the top rope, and this is not good 
for Malcolm. Morpheus wisely takes a seat and just waits. Look at the, geez. Seb Abbott goes off the top. And a sick, oh, that might have been a 450. Kind of halfway lands on Seb Abbott. And Malcolm Blapp has to roll out. Oh, body splash there from the second rope. Abbott catches the kick of Morpheus. Goes for the pin off the dragon screw. Morpheus might have been looking at his signature move there. The submission. But he quickly gets out of it and Black delivers a basement drop kick to the back of the head. Quickly reversing Morpheus. And now, Malcolm Black. Oh man, sunset flip power bomb. But Abbott is right there to break it up. And he is not having it. Big chop with those massive gloves he's wearing. And now delivering the kicks to Malcolm Black. Big right hand there. Oh golly, that running short uh, flatliner there. Abbott not sure who to go after. Seems like he's going after at, uh, Malcolm Black with a big raking of the back there. Into the corner goes Abbott. Morpheus slowly making his way to his feet. Black with a couple of kicks and a drop kick in the corner. Abbott rolls out again. Oh my, what a move that was from Morpheus as he taunts away and gets caught no big knee to the chest area oh clothesline there from morpheus standing him up drops him down and oh man delivers oh good lord a drop kick right to the face of malcolm black and abbott comes in and drop kicks oh low blow to malcolm black remember triple threat rules no disqualifications or anything like that Two. Oh wow okay that was unexpected that Abbott hits the low blow on Malcolm Black he must have just been completely out of it after that as he was unable to kick out from the pin dragon screw there from Abbott and here's a sunset flip power bomb to Morpheus that could have been it there for Malcolm Black and here's how it ends boom big sh shot right to the family jewels right into the fallen kingdom and there's there's how it ends Seb Abbott retains the television championship I'd have to think that body armor played some kind of role in him retaining not many people just roll over and take the three count after a low blow I understand a low blow is no fun and I understand that it does take a lot out of a person but to just not kick out I'm thinking that body armor had something to do with it and Malcolm Black might have something to say on Uprising next week what a television title matchup that was and I'm sure Malcolm Black is going to have some things to say, as I've said before. But making their way down to the ring, it is the tag team of Brian. The made their way to this tag team matchup through a tag team tournament for Uprising. They faced off in the second round against the Cleaners in Vice and Wayne Level, and thus guaranteeing themselves a matchup here tonight but the Tijuana family did beat them on on um, showdown a week or so ago so where does that all play into this championship matchup but it is the tournament finale for the uprising tag team championships their opponents coming in they faced off against the Tijuana family in the very first round of this tournament, getting the victory over Alex and Marco Corzo. It is James Gaines III and Jesse Newman 
the Sons of Carnage. James Gaines on the left, Jesse Newman with the Mohawk there. A new look for Jesse Newman as he stomps his way down to the ring. Sons of Carnage looking to take advantage of their momentum as they got a win in the first round against the Tijuana family in the second round against the Fallen Kingdom in Malcolm Black and Bruiser Brad. That's nothing to scoff at. So they have the momentum going in into this championship matchup. Brian the Brain and Enns have recently been defeated by the Tijuana family. So where is their momentum? So who knows? Let's see who is going to take home these beautiful uprising tag team championship belts. There it is, folks. The uprising tag team titles are on the line. The ref holds him up for all to see. And this thing is about to be underway. Brian and Enns talking strategy as well as Gaines and Newman meeting in the center of the ring. And good Lord, Brian the Brain starts things off with a huge STO, but gets a jawbreaker in return. And he's going to pick up. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. A gut buster. Followed it up with a big kick right to the side of the head. My goodness. Gaines undoing that turnbuckle. That's interesting to see. Brian the Brain, though, double underhook suplex. Rolls through it. Delivers a second one and rolls through that one as well. Oh, man, and drops Gaines right on his face. Here we go, got him up. No, a reversal from that suplex. And he, oh, I was gonna say delivers a suplex of his own, but instead drops a big knee across the face of Brain. Nice reversal there from Gaines, not letting Brian get two ends in his own corner there. And another reversal, getting out of it, drops Brian right on his head. Gets out of that, though, with a nice arm drag. Oh, my goodness. Completely flattens Gaines with that big clothesline into a backbreaker. My goodness. Off one side, and oh, he got the tag in. And a big clothesline there in a second one. Oh, kitchen sink sends Brian over his uh, head over heels. That big knee to the stomach. And what's Jesse Newman doing? Sends him into the, oh, face first into the turnbuckle. And then starts laying the boots. Oh my goodness, choking Brian now. Referee, okay, gets him out of there at five, or at four. Brian dragging his sins into this matchup. And, oh, what a move. Jesse Newman shuts that down with a kick right across the shin, sending ends down to the mat. And oh, nice reversal there from ends though. They tilt a whirl backbreaker, pushes him over center of the ring. And oh, big kick to the chest as Gaines tried to get a hold of ends. Oh man. Brian on the outside looking to catch his breath, try to get back in this matchup. He's shot to the stomach now by Newman. Across the ring, and they bounce off each other, but a kick to the stomach, followed up by a second one. And a sweeping roll takes Newman off his feet, and now Enns starts wailing away. If I'm Enns, I'm getting Newman away from his corner. Oh, boy. Look at this. Newman got Enns bent up like a pretzel and just slamming down onto the arm. Newman outside now, and it's James Gaines with a knee across the face of Enns. Look at this, though. Enns, oh, wow, what a move. What a move by Enns right there. Nice job getting out of that. And again, with this kick to the chest, as we just saw him do on Jesse Newman, up to one net knee now is Gaines. Blocks the right hand, delivers ones of his own, and a float over neckbreaker. No, 
Inns pushes him away. Gaines is going to send Inns into the corner. Catches him just in time. A big kick to the face and a backstabber. A backstabber from Inns. And he is stomping away. Now he's going to drag Gaines out to the center of the ring. Not a bad idea. And a big kick right into the stomach. And he's going to send Gaines over. Oh, doing a little bit of taunting there. Uh-oh. What are we going to see here? Look at Inns just stomping away at Gaines. And now Brian comes in and starts stomping at the chest of Gaines. And these guys are playing quite the tactical game here. Boots after boots, and now Inns tosses. Brian with a drop kick right to the chest. Oh, man. And quickly, quickly going for the pin now. Oh, Newman gets around Inns and, and uh, breaks that thing up. Oh, nice page turner there from Inns. Gaines able to kick away Brian. Brian, of course, as you can tell, much bigger than James Gaines. Oh, kicks to the underarm there. Oh, and a forearm right to the side of the head. That bruiser style of Gaines, and it looks like we're about to see it. No! Went for the sliding knee, and Brian using that brain and gets out of it. But, oh, eats a knee anyway. Not as devastating, but still. Looks like James is going to try again, and a second time. Brain pushes him away, able to get out of it. Oh, and delivers a huge STO. Goes for the pin. Two, no. That was a perfect time for a pin as Jesse Newman was out there on the outside trying to regain himself in this matchup and gains, dodges the punt and knocks Brain down to the mat. Jawbreaker. Man, these guys seem to know each other almost. Nice flip over neck breaker, going for the pin again. One, two, wow. Another unexpected victory here tonight. And it was after a flip over neck breaker. I don't think Brian or Enns even got their finishing moves in or even a signature move in. Things they're known for. That big STO right there, though, might have sealed the deal. Even though the pin was he kicked out at two, just this flip over neck breaker. And Newman didn't jump in because maybe he thought Jesse, or excuse me, uh, James was going to be able to kick out of it. He stood there on the outside as Brain gets the one, two, three after that flipping neck breaker and ladies and gentlemen with that pin the tag team of uprise just won the tag team championship ladies and gentlemen i introduce to you their new champions who is going to be first in line on uprising now to challenge these guys for the tag team titles. I'm excited. We'll see who is next in line on Uprising to face against the tag team. Well, folks, the ladders are in place. The tables are in place. And this match is ready to get underway. And this thing went from Ashley and Brittany facing off against each other, sisters facing off against each other, to adding Angelina Lane. They were adamant that their leader have a shot here at the Phoenix Championship, and they're even all three coming down to the ring at the same time. That's some solidarity right there. I don't know, maybe the Fallen Kingdom, but I don't know of any other group here in SWF who has that that group mentality that they're going to do anything they can for the group and not for their own personal gain but we'll have to see what happens as all three of these ladies the most brutal ladies i think in swf don't let their pretty looks fool you 
They are brutal to the core. So, TLC, Phoenix Championship is on the line. Let's see what's in store for these three ladies. I'm quite interested to uh, see what happens, especially between the sisters of Brittany and Ashley. So let's get in to our matchup right now. The tables and ladders scattered around the ring. And these fans are fired up. This is going to be a brutal matchup, and it's all right there for the Phoenix Championship. They're on Uprising. You can see the three members of the Blonde Beauty Club. Angelina Lane's ready. Brittany right there, and Ashley ready to go. Oh, oh. Brings her right back, my goodness. And immediately, it looks like Brittany is heading out to get to get the table here oh and oh man head first just right the back of the head there of Ashley on that ladder Angelina Lane picking up the ladder but Brittany slaps her away who's gonna be first up this ladder to get this championship oh monkey flip there from Angelina Lane the ladder is set up oh and Ashley slams Angelina Lane right into it. And now, oh, nice move there. Oh, boy. Picking her up. No, oh, reversal from Lane on Ashley. Nice job. The flipping moves didn't connect. And Brittany, big chop. And I don't know how smart this is. Maybe that was smart on Angelina Lane, getting one of them out of the ring. And oh, boy. Here goes Ashley. She is going up top, and this might be the fastest title match ever in SWF if Brittany doesn't get up there and stop this thing. Oh, just in time. Brittany, though, with the punches, and now the chops. Oh, man. Smacking her sister down to the mat. She immediately climbs up and starts for that championship. Angelina Lane now, you better get up there if you're going to stop this. And just in time and head first. Oh my goodness, there goes Brittany. And was this the plan all along, get the title for the leader? I don't know. Now Ashley going at it against Angelina. She's still holding on to that title. Oh, and she lets go. But Brittany's up on the other side and smacks the leader down. Ashley now wailing away on her sister, who's now just hanging on to that championship for dear life. Is she going to be able to get it here? No. Oh, boy. What are we going to see here from the sister? Oh, reversed. Uh-oh. And pulled down hard onto the mat, the flip. And now Angelina Lane's heading up top. Oh, boy. The ladder's been pushed down. Electric chair drop from Ashley to Angelina Lane. My goodness. Is she checking on her to see if she's okay here? That's very... Nope. Headbutt after headbutt after headbutt to the leader of the Blonde Beauty Club. The ladder comes back into play here. Oh. Brittany hits her sister with it and causes her to roll out of the ring. Immediately going after the leader of the Blonde Beauty Club and Angelina Lane and... Well, that might be it. If she could get over there and climb that ladder, this thing might be over in a heartbeat, but she is taking her time, being a little more methodical. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. Lane up to her feet and a big double axe handle right across the back of the head and the lower, all the way down the back. And now, Brittany heading up top and Ashley quick to jump in and try to stop this. Is she going to stop it? It doesn't look. She's going to let her sister win the championship. This whole thing. Very quick. Very fast. And they were trying to get up that ladder as fast as they could. And by God, they did it. And the winner and the new Uprising Phoenix champion 
is Brittany Baker of the Blonde Beauty Club. Nice shot there with the title. The time has come, ladies and gentlemen, and it is our main event of Thin Red Line. The SWF Elite Heavyweight Championship for Rebellion. This is the championship that started it all. Calypso won this championship at crowning achievement, defended it against Kid Hades, and then this man showed up. He is the smallest bruiser here in SWF, and he proudly displays that name to all. Leo McKay has come here and proven me and everybody else in the SWF wrong about being a smaller guy in the main title hunt. Just because you're a little guy doesn't mean you're stuck in the mid card for the television championship, for the internet championship. It's, you come in, you fight, you claw, you bleed and sweat and do everything you have to do to get up to that mountain. And then when you get up there, you kick the guru who sits on top of it meditating right in the face and then you become king of the mountain. Leo McKay looks to do that here tonight. And there seems to be quite a few people that would like to see that. And if I'm not mistaken, just about everybody in the locker room, minus Calypso, would like to see that. Leo McKay, AKA the smallest bruiser, he is ready to fight. This is a no holds barred matchup. The uh, women's triple threat TLC match left some to be desired. But let's see if these two gentlemen can bring the pain and the weapons. And who's going to use them most effectively? And who's going to come out on top? The lights go down, ladies and gentlemen. And the pyro goes off. As you can see, that white belt right around his waist. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the SWF Elite Heavyweight Champion, Calypso. He battled through eight other men, however many men were in that tournament, to make it to the championship. And then defeated Kid Hades, defended against Kid Hades again at Capital Combat. And then that very next night on Rebellion, or that very next Rebellion show, Leo McKay came down to make his presence known that he was next in line for that championship. And he has done just that. He's played mind games with Calypso. And that's what I think might be the downfall of our elite champion is the mind games. It's not necessarily the fights. It uh, To me, it's got to be those mind games. Leo McKay, he is ready to go. The fans are still standing. They haven't sit, sat down at all. And he, look at the, he just smiles at the champion like, yep, you know what I'm coming for. The champion wearing that uh, new blue and white attire with the blue and black mask. That's a fantastic mask. I know my masks. I'm pretty fond of the mask. How many times can I say mask? Calypso relinquishes the Elite Heavyweight Championship, taking... One last look at it before handing it over to the referee, Leo McKay. He is ready. The ref, this is what it's for. This is what we're fighting for, ladies and gentlemen. The championship that started it all for Rebellion and SWF. The bell rings, and this no-holds-barred matchup is underway. Leo McKay starting things off with a side Russian leg sweep. Shot to the back of Calypso. Look at this. Whoa. Oof. Driving Calypso's head down in the lower back as he hops up immediately holding that lower back. Big European uppercut from Leo McKay, but Calypso is going to fireman's carry reverse out of that next move. 
Sending McKay across the ring. And oh man, what a knee. Right to the chest. Right to the chest of the smallest bruiser. Oh man, nice slam there. I'm interested to see who's going to be the first one, if either one, to bring out a weapon. Look at that takedown. My goodness, the strength of just this little man. You don't have to look like Brock Lesnar to be strong like Brock Lesnar, and that's what Leo McKay just showed. Wow. Nice reversal off the top rope and a drop kick right to the top of the head. Leo McKay says bring it as Calypso rolls outside onto the apron. And what are we... Is he going to... Oh, a little trash talk in the ear and a big right hand sends Calypso down to the ground. They are outside, folks, and this could be a recipe for disaster, and just like that, Calypso tosses Leo McKay back inside it. I would think, being Calypso, if you want to hold that title, you got to bring those weapons out. Do everything you can to ensure your own victory. Oh, my goodness, the Cosmic Clash early off in this matchup. Remember, there are no rope breaks in SWF at all. But Leo McKay is able to kick out. My goodness. And jawbreaker right to the face. Oh, my. Oh, right across the knee of Leo McKay. And these guys may not need weapons. Kick to the stomach now. And he is hooking him up. And rolling those dice. Center of the ring. Do we have a new elite Heavyweight championship, no. A two count. Calypso fights out of that pin. Leo McKay, can't believe it. Somebody, I would think, given the option, would go out and get a chair, a sledgehammer, a baseball bat, a mop, anything to get the advantage. European uppercut there, forearm shot. He's gonna double arm him. Oh, right into a lung blower. Those knees right into the pecs of Leo McKay. And, oh, man, we're about to see it again. Stardust neckbreaker right there. Nowhere for Leo to go. Is Calypso going to win? No. A two count. These guys are battling it out. And I couldn't be more excited for this matchup. Oh, boy. Calypso's heading out. Nope. I thought he might have been going for a weapon, a table, anything. Off the top and big knee right to the face. Off the ropes and a double axe handle to the top of the head. Calypso now, he is fired up. Headlock. He's going to send Leo across the ring and oh my God. He is cranked, ladies and gentlemen. My goodness. Calypso. Another Stardust neckbreaker, folks. I think that might be it. Leo McKay down for the count. And he is. Leo McKay has just been defeated. Ladies and gentlemen, Calypso has just become your longest reigning SWF champion of, of either brand. And I can't believe that. Leo McKay was bringing the pain, folks. But in the end, two Stardust neck breakers are just enough to give Calypso the victory. And he hangs on to that championship for one more day. How much longer can he hold on to this title? As we see another angle there of the Stardust neck breaker. Your winner, ladies and gentlemen, and still elite heavyweight champion it is wait a minute who whose music is, is that oh my god it's alex it's alex corzo is he bringing he's cashing in he's cashing in i don't think calypso see well he sees him now alex corzo diving on him with the luthes punch after punch my goodness corzo picked the perfect time to cash in this championship he's got Calypso up and face first across the knee. Corzo goes down for the pin. Two. Oh, I, I can't believe it. I cannot believe it after a battle 
a hard fought battle with with Leo McKay Calypso just got pinned by Alex Corzo after cashing in that championship contract belt and now he trades one belt for another I don't believe what I'm seeing Alex Corzo just constantly 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 on Twitter saying he's going after the Uprising Championship. It didn't matter if Bruiser Brad would win. It didn't matter if Siler Jordan would win. They had to look out for Alex Corzo, and he just swerved us all. Ladies and gentlemen, he swerved everyone, and Alex Corzo has jumped to Rebellion and removed Calypso as champion. This is unprecedented, ladies and gentlemen. Our first ever cash-in of the championship contract belt and it was a successful one for Alex Corzo. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for watching Thin Red Line. We hope you join us for Rebellion, Uprising, and Showdown. We're out of time. We'll see you later.